Hello students, today we are going to start our second chapter of movements, the adventures of Toto by Ruskin Bon. So before we start our chapter, let's read out something about the author. Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. He lives with his adopted family in Lundur, Masuri, India. The Indian Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of children's literature in India. He has written more than 40 books for children and is the recipient of the Sahitya Academy Award, the Padma Sri and the Padma Bhushan. So it's a matter of pride uh, for us. The story that you are going to read is written by the author who lives in our, in our state only. And uh, this author is of British descent, means his parents were the Britisher. And he's living here with his adopted family and he has written as many as 40 books for the children. And that's why the Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of the children literature in India. So let's start with the chapter. So uh, the adventures of Toto. So there is a prompt, have you ever had a baby monkey as a pet? Toto is a baby monkey. Let's find out whether he is mischievous or docile. So this monkey, this is a story of a monkey named Toto and it's a baby monkey. And uh, we have to find out we will find out in the story that whether the monkey is mischievous or docile. So you can imagine whether the monkey could be a mischievous or docile. Docile means uh, one who allow to control someone else. Submissive, you can say. Mischievous, you already know the meaning of mischievous. So we, have, we will find out whether the monkey is uh, docile, submissive or mischievous. So let's start. So grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of uh, ru uh, 5 rupees. So this monkey was, bro uh, was bought by grandfather. This is the one character <coughs> in the story, grandfather. And this is in a narrative form. The author is uh, narrating this story and this grandfather is the grandfather of uh, the narrator or the author who bought this Toto. Toto is the name of the monkey from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees, 5 rupees, for the sum of 5 rupees it was bought. The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough. So Tonga driver who drive Tonga, Tonga is a carriers, you know, drawn by a horse. So this Tonga drive, uh, driver used to keep uh, this monkey tied to a feeding trough. Feeding trough means uh, it's a container, you know, container or tub. Feeding means that it used to give uh, food to the animals. So feeding trough means it's a container that was used to feed animals. So this monkey was tied to this feeding trough by the Tonga driver. And the monkey looked so out of place. So out of place. What is out of place means when you are feeling inappropriate or uncomfortable at a certain place or in a certain situation and the monkey looked so out of place why he is looking so out of place because monkey if you tie a monkey one place definitely he will feel out of place because a monkey has a nature that he always it always want to you know jump around and run around okay so that's why he was feeling out of place so there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private zoo. So while seeing his pathetic condition, while seeing his poor condition, the grandfather decided that he would buy it and he would add it to his private zoo. That means the grandfather had a private zoo. Private zoo. So he wanted to, he decided to add this little fellow, little fellow means this little monkey to his private Jew. Private Jew means a Jew that is maintained or organized by a person for himself or his family. Okay. So Toto was pretty monkey. Toto was a pretty monkey. Oh, can a monkey be pretty? 
let's see so his bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath the deep set eyebrows so in this paragraph you will see some description of this toto is given about his look about his nature okay so firstly said his bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath the deep set eyebrows sparkled mean twinkled to shine so bright eyes shines with the mischief here in the second paragraph only we come to know that this monkey is not a docile one this monkey is going to be very mischievous because his eyes are sparkling with the mischief beneath the deep set eyebrow deep set means uh, the eyebrow which are set deep and his teeth which were poly white poly white poly is adjective like a pearl pearl means uh, it's a bead in hindi we call moti so it is compared his teeth are compared with the pearl so his teeth are as white as pearl and were very often displayed in smile that frightened the life for out of early anglo indian ladies sir so these teeth were often displayed in a smile so whenever this monkey gives a smile his pearly white teeth are displayed but this smile frightened the life out of elderly anglo indian ladies who is this anglo indian ladies because you know the ruskin bond is of uh, british descent anglo indian means uh, the person who is born in british uh, but living here in india for long time that is called anglo indian so because author himself is anglo indian so his family member there would be some family member who would be anglo indians and these are the ladies elderly ladies meant old age ladies so whenever this monkey smiles these ladies who are anglo indians got frightened by his smile but this but his hands looked dried up as though they had been picked in the sun for many years they had been pickled okay so now it's a description of his hands so his hands looks very dried up dried up means thin not uh, muscular not fleshy as though they had been pickled pickled means you know whenever we make pickles uh, first we you know chop the uh, fruits and then we keep it in the sun to dry it up so that's why this word is used as a verb had been pickled means as it has been uh, kept in sun to dry so his hands are looking very dried up as the things are kept in the sun to dry up for many years okay so about his eyes is very bright and is sparkled with mischief about his teeth it the teeth are as white as pearl and then comes about his hands the hands are very dried up they are very thin and next yet his fingers were quick and wicked so fingers are very quick and wicked wicked means naughty or mischievous and his tail now next about his tail while adding to his good looks so the tail is adding something good to his looks and within bracket is saying grandfather believe a tail would add to any one's good looks so why the author is saying that while adding to his good looks because this was the belief of the grandfather of the author the grandfather believe a tail would add to any one's good looks and that's why the author is writing the tail while adding uh, to his good looks uh, means the tail is looking something good to his uh, looks and uh, also serve as a third end so it is not only adding uh, to his good looks uh, but also it serve as uh, a third hand why it is called a third hand uh, because he could use it to hang from a branch you might have seen some time monkey is you know quail are their tails uh, around the branch and they can uh, you know swing from one side to another side while hanging on the 
branch with their tails and it was capable of scooping up uh, any delicacy that might be out of reach of his hands so it's uh, how does this monkey use uh, his uh, tail firstly it is said he could uh, hang he could use it to hang from a branch second thing uh, he can uh, pick up scooping means pick up it and it was capable of scoop, scooping means he was able to pick up any delicacy that might be out of his reach of his hand delicacy means oneness of any structure but here delicacy means uh, the food of one's choice or you can say tasty so he could pick up uh, any tasty food that might be out of reach of his hand so here in this paragraph uh, all the discussion about this monkey is given about his eyes about his teeth about his hand about his fingers and even about his tail okay we'll move further so grandmother always fussed when grandfather brought home some new bird or animal so it was decided that toast toto Toto's presence should be kept uh, a secret from her until she was in a particularly good mood. So, grandmother always fussed when grandfather brought home some new bird and animal. Fuss means fuss means when you agitate, complain, or you make hue and cry of something. So, whenever grandfather brought any new animal or bird home. it was grandmother who always complained or agitated or opposed it and that's why for this reason only it was decided that toto's presence should be kept a secret from her until she was in a particular good mood so they won't let the grandmother know about toto until she is in a good mood so grandfather and i put him away in a little Op, uh, closest opening into my bedroom wall where he was tied securely so in order to hide this monkey from grandmother the grandfather and the author put this monkey in a little closet closest meant cupboard or wardrobe that was the opening into the my bedroom means the author's bedroom wall and where he was tied securely so in that closest uh, he was tied securely closest can be one small room also store room we can say okay or it may be a cupboard so he, uh, this monkey was tied there or so we thought or so we thought what does this mean this means that they thought they, they had tied it securely there they thought it it was not actual because he will come to know about it okay so to a peg person into the wall he was tied to a peg a peg mean a spike or bolt or any stake you might have seen uh, the uh, animals like cows are uh, not tied to some peg that has uh, not drawn into ground so a peg the fasten into the wall so there was a peg there was a spack that was fastened into the wall and to that peg that is spack this monkey was tied in that closest okay a few hours later so when grandfather and i came back to release toto we found that the walls of which had been covered with some ornamental paper chosen by grandfather now stood out as a naked brick and plaster so to their surprise when grandfather the author came back to release uh, toto so they found that the wall of the closet which had been covered with some ornamental paper ornamental paper means the paper decorative papers the paper which are pasted on the wall in order to decorate in order to make a, a look uh, to gi- uh, to give a good look to the room or store or whatever it is okay so these paper was torn away and uh, behind that uh, they could see the naked brick and plaster of the wall 
the peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket. A wrenched means to, to bend it. So it was the peg or the spike was also bent from its socket. And my school blazer, which had been hanging there, was in thread. Thread means it was torn. It was tattered. It was made into the pieces. So this is all the monkey did there in the closest. He torn all the decorative paper that was pasted on the wall. And he also tried to, you know, pull out to the peg. And that's why he wrenched, he bent it. And he also, you know, shreds or make uh, his, uh, the, uh, the blazer of the author into the pieces. So I wonder what grandfather I wonder what grandfather, uh, grandfather or grandmother would say. So he was thinking, had grandmother sawn it, so what she would say. But grandfather didn't worry. Grandfather didn't worry. So grandfather was a patient person. Okay. He didn't worry. He seemed pleased with Toto's performance. So contrary to be, uh, contrary to becoming uh, you know angry to what he did, he seemed pleased with the Toto's performance, and he remarks he is clever," said grandfather. "Given time, I'm sure he could have tied the torn pieces of your blazer into rope and made his escape from the window." So. Grandfather was very surprised at his wit, at his cleverness. And even he forethought that uh, if he had been given time, so he was such a clever animal that he would have uh, tied all the pieces of the blazer and would have made a rope out of it uh, and would have uh, made his escape from the window. We, we, we could summarize that the grandfather was very happy and uh, you know surprised seeing the intelligence of monkey and even he thought that he could do something more if he had been given time. Okay. So his presence in the house uh, is still a secret, means nobody else knew about Toto except grandfather and the narrator. Toto was not transferred to a big case in the servants quarters where number of grandfathers pets lived very sociably together. So in the beginning of the chapter it had been told that the, uh, the grandfather had uh, a private Jew and uh, because uh, Toto was uh, not such animal that can be kept inside the house so they decided to keep it there with the other animals that were living very sociably together, sociably, sociably together means uh, uh, with, uh, with harmony, in harmony with each other, okay. So they decided to transfer in a big case to the servant parts of where other animals are also living there and there are the list of animals, a tortoise, uh, a pair of rabbits, a tame squirrel, tame squirrels, domestic characters, we can say, okay. And for a while, my pet uh, got, uh, and there was a got also, pet got. For a while, it was a pet got of author. But the monkey wouldn't allow any of his companion to sleep at night. So all the animal, it is mentioned here that were living sociably together. There was no problem with one another. But when this monkey was kept there, this became nuisance for all the animals uh, because it didn't allow any one of his companion to sleep at night. So grandfather who had to leave Dehradun next uh, day to collect his pension in Saranpur decided to take him along. So next day, grandfather was about to go to Dehradun. And uh, because this monkey was, uh, you know, troublesome for all other animals uh, and he didn't want to leave it there with all the animals uh, and that's why he decided that uh, he would take it along with him 
to Saranpur where he was going to collect his pension. So unfortunately, I could not accompany grandfather on the trip. So the author says that he was not able to accompany his grandfather on the trip to Saranpur. But what all happened there? This was told by grandfather afterwards. So what all ha had happened there that we are going to read now. A big black canvas kit bag was provided for Toto. So how Toto would be carried to Saranpur? It was decided that uh, they will put it uh, into a canvas bag. Canvas is a type of cloth, very thick uh, cloth. Okay, so it was to be uh, put into that. This which some straw at the bottom, with some straw at the bottom, became a new board. So some straw, straw means uh, dried leaves or grass. So uh, there was a straw kept at the bottom of the this bag, kit bag, and uh, it became his new abode. Abode means a place where one live or reside. So this become his re residential place now. Means he was put into this bag. So there was some straw place uh, at the bottom of the bag and then Toto was put into that bag. When the bag was closed, uh, there was no escape. So then the bag was closed and hence all the escape for the monkey was closed. He was not able to come out of the bag anyway. Toto could not get his hands through the opening and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through. So neither he was able to take out his hand from the opening of the canvas bag and nor he could bite it away to make a hole and come out from there. So he was securely kept inside the bag. His efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jump into the air. So he couldn't do anything else there except a few things that he was doing. He was making effort to get out to only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor. So when he tried to come out of the bag, only thing what he can do, he could do is was that to roll about on the floor. He could only roll about the floor. Okay, or occasionally he could, uh, he was jumping into the air. So this is all he could do there. Otherwise, he was not able to come out of the bag. An exhibition that attracted a curious crowd of onlookers on the Radon railway platform. And while he was doing this all, while he was rolling about on the floor, while occasionally he was jumping into the air, this became an exhibition. Exhibition means some sort of show or that attracted the curious crowd of onlooker. Onlooker means spectator, means the people who used to watch something or look at something. So other people who so this monkey, this become a uh, this become one short of exhibition for those all on the Dehradun railway platform. Now next, uh, Toto remained in the bag as far as uh, Saranpur, but while grandfather was producing his ticket uh, at the railway turnstile. Toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a white grin. So, as far as grandfather was traveling to the Saranpur, Toto remained in the bag. But while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile, turnstile means is a mechanical gate and which is designed in such a way that only one person can enter through the gate. You might have seen it's rotated and uh, only one person can make it once a way through this. Okay. So when grandfather was showing his ticker to the ticket collector at the railway station, the transal gate, 
this Toto suddenly poked. Poked means he came out. He put his head out of the bag and gave a ticket collector a wide grin. Grin means smile, a big smile. The poor man was taken aback. Means he was shocked or he was surprised seeing a monkey in the bag. But with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance, he said, Sir, you have a dog with you. You will have to pay for it accordingly. So this was something unexpected for the grandfather at the time. When he was sewing, he was producing his ticket. That only that time only he popped out out of the bag, and uh, the ticket collector was taken aback. But uh, using his great presence of mind, and it was very annoyance to grandfather when he said that uh, it was a dog. He was carrying a dog, and he would have to pay for it accordingly. Pay for it means he had to pay the ticket charges of the dog. So it was very annoying. It was very surprising, and it was puzzling even for the grandfather that the ticket collector was uh, calling the monkey a dog. So that's why it is done. It was a great annoyance for him. Okay, so we'll see. In vain did grandfather take Toto out of the bag. In vain means the result become useless or fruitless. So the grandfather took Toto out of the bag. Why? To prove that this is not a dog. This is a monkey. But it went in vain. Means there was no use of this. This failed. This attempt of his failed. The ticket collector didn't accept it. Again, in vain did he try to prove that the monkey did not qualify as a dog. And grandfather also tried to prove that a monkey cannot be qualified as a dog or a monkey cannot be called a dog. So this attempt was also in vain or even as a quadruped. Quadruped means... Uh, uh, animals which have four legs. So even this monkey is not a quadruped. Means because monkey can walk on his two legs, hind legs. So it's not even quadri leg like a dog. So he tried to prove that a monkey is not a dog, even if it's not a quadruped. Toto was classified a dog by ticket collector, but the ticket collector was reluctant to accept it. He only bent on classifying it as a dog, and three rupees was, uh, was the sum handed over as his fare. Ultimately, the grandfather had to pay three rupees as his fare because the ticket collector was bent on classifying or saying that it was a dog and not a monkey. So this is a strange thing happened there. And why the ticket collector even after seeing Toto was not believing that it was a monkey and not a dog. So this you have to think about and maybe there is a questions on this uh, thinking of ticket collector okay then grandfather just to get his own back get to his get to his own back means when we want to retaliate when we want to take revenge when we want to punish someone because someone has done something wrong to us so the grandfather wanted to retaliate and he took from his pocket uh, our pet tortoise so there was a tortoise that was kept in the pocket of grandfather and he took it out from there and asked the ticket collector what must I pay for this since you charge for all animals. So he was trying to tease him 
Oh, he was trying to provoke him, yes. and that's why showing this tota is that he took out from his pocket, asking him that what uh, he must pay for this because uh, he was charging for every animal. The ticket collector looked closely at the tortoise, prodded it with his forefinger. So prodded it with his forefinger. Prodded means uh, to push or to poke with fingers. So he's just poked it with his forefinger and gave grandfather a pleased and triumphant look. Triumphant means. Uh, when you think that uh, you are one who cannot be defeated uh, or when you think that you are the winner or you have done something what you want to do with someone so with a triumphant look uh, he said no charge it's not a dog so no charge was taken of course it was a little tortoise so this is all for today we will continue in the next video thank you very much